I'm Sarah Gleason. I am a PhD candidate in the Department of Material Science and Engineering, and I've received the NSF, GRFP, and the NDSEG fellowships. NDSEG and GRFP are both um, similar in a lot of ways, like they're both federally funded um, science awards and um, come with very few strings attached as to what you actually need to work on. Um, so for the NSF GRFP, for example, you actually propose research, um, but really that's just evaluating whether you can propose something that's a logical and exciting research topic and they don't hold you to it. And for the NDSEG, um, you also talk about your research interests um, with a lot less specificity, but again, they don't really hold you to any particular topic. Um, and neither one has any kind of post-graduation requirements. Um, and so in general, a lot of the ways that they would affect um, how your grad school career goes are very similar to each other. Um, so it was kind of a hard decision between them because they seem similar. I ended up going with the NSF GRFP um, for the most part just because I think it has a little bit more name recognition to it. Um, I think that people in a lot of different fields would have heard of the GRFP, whereas the NDSEG is definitely more um, science focused um, and has a little bit more of a defense bent, which is a direction that I don't necessarily see myself going in um, after graduating. So um, the GRFP, that was essentially what it boiled down to is that I thought it had a little bit more um, of a diverse appeal to it. So the funding has been really great because it gives me some flexibility in um, kind of things that I can do outside of the lab also. For example, um, I've had it for one year so far and it's already funded me to go to two different um, national meetings, um, which has been really great. Um, and my boss is really excited then to send me to a lot of different places that otherwise maybe I wouldn't be going. Um, so it's nice to have that. Uh, funding in order to do some of these um, like supplementary and um, scientific communication. The lab that I work in does a lot of polymer and nanomaterials um, and so the project that I'm working on is um, trying to take polymers and really control how they um, assemble down at the nanoscale and we're trying to recreate um, things that can help us to mimic the structure of bone and also to learn more about how bone forms um, with the idea being that this knowledge that we're gaining here would be able to translate into um, better materials for replacing damaged bone or um, potentially you know better solutions for coming up with um, other bone issues that people would have. In undergrad, I um, worked in a um, biomedical engineering lab where we did a lot of um, like therapeutic diagnostic imaging um, using ultrasound, um, which was something that was really interesting, but not something that I like totally saw myself going and doing um, in grad school. And I spent one summer during undergrad working um, at a different school in a different research lab where we did a lot of electrospinning, um, which is a polymer fabrication technique where you basically create um, really tiny polymer fibers. Um, and that's something that I thought was really interesting. Um, has a lot of really diverse applications um, and there's a lot of really interesting science that is behind it. So during my year off where I was able to kind of like think about what I really liked, um, I realized that that summer that I spent doing electrospinning is what I liked more than doing the medical applications of polymer science. Um, so when I applied to grad school, um, I was really looking at um, more polymer science focused labs um, and less based into like the biomedical applications. And so that kind of led me to my current lab where we have a really um, fundamental polymer science and um, polymer physics focus. And then we kind of branch that out into different applications. For the um, GRFP, um, I thought it was a pretty extensive application. I don't think it's anything compared to like the Fulbright, for example, but um, it is not too complicated of an application, but if you really want to do it well, I think you have to really devote some time to it. Like I would recommend starting probably a couple months in advance. Um, that gives you a chance to um, make sure you have all the information in the application, in, um, but then the essays are the most important part. So that gives you a chance to really plan out what you want to say in them, um, 
and also then to like have people read over them and give you feedback and write up a couple drafts without being in too much of a rush over it. So that one for me took a little bit of time, but that's because I really was pretty thorough about my um, process of writing. Um, and the ND SEG is a lot quicker. I think that's the quickest one that I applied to. Um, in general, the application um, is online and you just kind of are filling out information um, about yourself and about what you've done. And then the personal statement or the essay component of it is really short. It was like less than a page. And um, the things that they ask are a little um, more open-ended, I think. So it gives you some flexibility in how you write it. Um, so for me, that one was much quicker. And the deadline for it is also um, about a month after the um, GRFP deadline. So I was able to kind of like take what I'd already worked through for all my GRFP essays and kind of just um, take parts of it that I thought would work well for the NDSEG um, application and kind of just rework it to be for that essay. So that also made it a little bit easier because I'd already gone through it once with the GRFP. I mean, you probably like hear this all the time, but the advice is start early um, because like I said, I think the most helpful thing is having people read through it and people give you feedback. And so that's something that's really hard to do if you kind of rush through it last minute. Um, also something that was the most helpful for me is really taking um, a little bit of time, especially near the beginning, to um, kind of take stock of exactly what each award is looking for. Um, usually awards are pretty clear about what they prioritize. So for the GRFP, for example, they really put a focus on, they always say, intellectual merit and broader impact. Um, so being able to take some time and really figure out like what those things mean and what they're looking for and how that applies to things that I've done or I'm planning to do um, is something that like is kind of hard to rush. Um, and also getting feedback from um, a really wide variety of people was really helpful to me. So I would show it to my family members who aren't in science and I would show it to people who have previously gotten these awards so they know exactly what the evaluators are looking for or professors in my department who actually have served on the selection committee before um, and getting all of those different inputs was um, pretty valuable. Um, oh, the worst part is waiting. <laughs> uh, once you've gotten it in, it's like a nice feeling that you're done, but then there's um, about six months sometimes when you have to wait to hear back, and that's really frustrating because um, you can like kind of put it out of your mind, but then um, every time you think of it again, it's like kind of frustrating uh, for how long you have to wait to hear back. So that was, I think, the worst part. The best part of the process for me, or like the, what it's turned into being the best part, is probably that. Um, I applied for these right when I got to grad school within the first couple of months so it kind of forced me to sit down and think about what's my background, what are my strengths, what are my priorities, like what am I really interested in. So kind of right off the bat um, it had me go through this process of really being able to like think about but also put into words um, what I wanted to get out of grad school. So that was something that I think has really um, been helpful um, moving forward after the awards were over.